Vidheads, it's good to see your beautiful filmmaking faces once again. I'm sorry I've been away for so long, but I'm back in the saddle now. Like I told you guys, I've been trying to raise up my production company and I'm finally getting it going and got a little busy. And so I had to hire some people, editors, cam ops, and that kind of thing. That's neither here nor there. In this video, we're talking about the Rode Wireless Go 2 enhancements update now i'm saying that's because i made an enhancement video for the road wireless go before and i'm not too satisfied with that video matter of fact i'm going to end up taking that video down and i'm going to replace it with this video now when i made that video i didn't have the amount of experience with the unit as i do now now that i've used it for much longer i have a little bit more insight when it comes to the road wireless go 2. and i'm also going to show you my post editing process to get that sound that signal a little bit more professional for those particular projects that need that so make sure you stay tuned for that as well oh i don't want to forget i'm going to be showing you how to perform game staging which shows you how to set the game on your unit and in camera so that you have the best sound possible don't worry, I'll have time codes and chapters so you guys can go right to where you need to go. So let's just start right off. Now, the first thing I'm gonna say for an enhancement for the Rode Wireless Go 2, and also these enhancements will work for the Rode Wireless Go as well. And so I'm gonna say it is the Zoom H6. What I'm gonna say about the Zoom H6 is that it has better preamps in it, better than my camera. So I used to record with the receiver plugged into my camera, but now I record with the receiver plugged into my Zoom H6. Why? It's because I get a cleaner sound because the preamps are better in the Zoom H6 than it is in my camera. And what I mean by preamps, what I mean is it is the process in which the unit use and process the signal. So now the camera is processing the signal in a certain way, but it's not as good as the processing on the Zoom H6. So you'll hear the difference when you begin to record and you're turning it up and you hear that hiss and you, like that hiss you can't get out. A lot of times that has to do with your preamps. And so for me, when I'm doing my TV show and all that stuff, like I told you guys, I'm using my Rode Wireless Go 2 on TV shows and everything else. Yeah, when I have more than two subs, I break out my Ceremonic V2 Pro, I have both sets. And see the beautiful thing about the Zoom H6 is that it can accept six different inputs simultaneously and it can record six different tracks simultaneously. And so I can take all six tracks and bring them into my editor and address all six different signals separately. And so that's what makes it awesome. Plus it has a really nice uh, preamp. Well, at least it's better than my camera preamp and I'm using an A7S III. And so for me, it is a win-win a lot of guys when they turn professional you'll see that they're going to be recording with external recorders as opposed to recording into your camera now recording into the camera is good when you're doing youtube and those types of things where sound is not that critical but when you're doing tv shows and more professional projects that you want everything top notch as best as you can you kind of want to look at external um, recorders with that being said recording into the zoom h6 is a huge enhancement for me and i can see the difference when it comes to my production okay so here we go going into the second enhancement i'm gonna say the rode live headset i have it on right now i'm actually using it right here and so what's good about this well let's say you have a subject on camera maybe they're reading they're going down they're using it moving their heads around and you don't mind having the headset in the shot well, I'm actually shooting one show where I have a pastor that has to bend down and read the Bible and all that. And so when you have a lavalier right here on their chest, of course, when they bend down, it's gonna get louder. Then when they lift the head up, it's not gonna be as loud as it was when they had the head down looking at the book reading. Joy, then you could have joy that abides. And that's what we wanna deal with today. If you could go with me uh, to First Chronicles chapter 16, well, I want to start at chapter 15 as we begin to unpack. I've got my joy back. And so if I put this on them, then no matter if they go down or up, it's still going to be the same volume. And so I can adjust that in post, but still it's better to have it 
in camera, you know what I'm saying, at the time of the shooting as best as possible, where you don't have to do all that adjustment in post, right? And so that cuts out a lot of time. So something like this is really interesting because you don't have to hold a mic or anything like that. It's held on by hey, the little band on your ears or whatever, and it wraps around, the wire goes down the back, and that's that. And I think the, the uh, live headset is only like $25, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, moving on to number three. I'm gonna say this ZG scene, which is the ZG R30. And what this is is a charging box for the Rode Wireless Go 2, and it works for the Rode Wireless Go as well. And what happens is you actually put your all three units in the box and it actually charges for you. Not only does it charge for you, you can use the box as a backup um, power source with your USB-A and coming out and you can actually power different things and you get 2.4 amps voltage out of this thing, which is really awesome. Magnetic close has an indicator that lets you know how much battery life is left on the battery pack inside. It's a 3,400 milliamp battery packed into this thing. I would say the only drawback that I have when it comes to this, and it's not really a drawback, it's just my preference. And I would like to have seen it have space for the rest of my accessories, like my two labs and my windscreens, the little furry caps that go on the units. I wish there was some space for that. And I guess there is some space because it comes with a little leather looking pouch you can go in and you can actually put the stuff in there. This is a really nice enhancement at $50. So what happens is when I go on a shoot and I come back, all I do is I open this thing up and I put all three units inside this case and then I just let it charge and then I don't have to worry about it until I have another shoot. I open it up, take all three units back out, put it in the carrying case of my choice, which I'm gonna show you guys this pouch right here is why I really like it because it fits all three units in it. I can fit both of my labs in it. I fit my actual output uh, cable um, wire from the receiver to the camera that goes in there uh, along with my windscreens goes inside this case and I don't have any issues. I just zip it up, it goes in my bag. It's nice and compact and it's out of the way and if I need it, I know to go right to that pouch and get everything I need and put it right back. All right, moving on to number four. Here we go. So now this is the Rode Interview Go. Now I like these, I bought two of them actually. And so what I do with these is basically you take the transmitter and you just clip it on here, put the wind muff foam on top and it's basically an actual microphone. And I like it, I really like it because the main thing is, is that it's out of the way. It's very universal. I'm using the same exact unit. I don't have to have something separate. I'm using the same thing that I'm already carrying with me and I'm just enhancing it by using this. And so what I would recommend is make sure you turn pad mode on when you use this with your transmitters and it should turn out really well for you. Um, I ended up using it myself on my last shoot which is the National Clean Water event. We are honored to be a part of the National Water Collective. It was really inspiring today, just hearing about all of the amazing work that's continuing to happen in Flint, and also inspiring to get the audience asking us hard questions. We created a uh, jewelry piece called the Flint Water Bell to bring awareness to the water crisis. So coming to this event was so informative, and there were so many people who I didn't know were involved in the fight in the, Flint, in the water crisis. I just feel overwhelmed with happiness and uh, thankfulness for today. Uh, we were able to bring together some amazing folk in water uh, to talk about the projects that they're currently working on in Flint, Michigan. Again, it was a lifesaver for me because I didn't know what to expect when I came. I put them in my bag just in case and just so happened I did need to use them based on what was going on and what was there at the event and how I had to capture certain things. So what I did was I interviewed all the different guests and I'm just gonna do a little highlight based on their responses. So I just get a little feedback from them, how they felt the event was, this, that, and the other. A couple people out of the crowd, there's your highlight. You know what I'm saying? Then I have B-roll of what actually went on in the event. 
So that's just kind of how I'm doing that. So these kind of came in handy when I wanted to get that response for them. I wanted to get their reactions to the event. I was able to pull these out and it worked out great. So anyway, looking at this, the first thing I want to do is bring in my denoiser. Okay, so I'm gonna denoise. Here it is right here. That's the first thing I do because I know automatically that um, the Rode Wireless Go has a little noise on it, little noise floor. It's not much, and if you're not listening with monitoring in earbuds or monitor headphones, you probably won't hear it. But I know it's there because I this is like my probably my 19th episode um, using these and so anyway what I do is I go right here to the edit and the first thing I do is I bring this down to about 20 percent so around 20 and so when I play it back age we're just talking about uh, the need for uh, forgiveness now and you can see right here the red the red is what is actually taken out and the blue is what's actually bypassing through. And so it's actually taking, filtering some things out of there. We not only need forgiveness, but we also it's need giving to me forgive. a cleaner sound. And I want to uh, go a little bit further on the definition of what that means. Now, sometimes I forget to um, set my game properly. And when I do that, I have to turn up my volume. And when I turn up my volume, it's going to introduce more noise floor. So then sometimes I have to bring this up and my limit is around 50. I don't, I don't take it past 50. That's normally my limit because I don't want to start sounding distorted and that kind of thing. So when I first set it is at 20. So now we have that set. The second thing I want to show you guys, let me compress this. Second thing is the compressor. So we go to audio effects. We're going to go to amplitude and compression. And we're going to go down here to tube model compressor. I'm going to take that and drag it on here. So this is the compressor. Now what this does is it allows me to bring the higher noise signal down to match um, the lower noise signal so it'll give me a more uniform audio signal right and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come down here i'm going to tell it about nine what i do is i set my threshold somewhere around where i think the low um audio signal is at and that's where i kind of set my threshold at then once i set my threshold then i normally have my tack at two and so then my ratio then i'll set my ratio and i normally have my ratio at about 10. that's normally my sweet spot where i like it so basically what that is is it's telling it's telling premiere pro that i each one of these spikes that is above my threshold which is negative 19 db which is probably if i had to if i had the actual markings i don't know how to put the markings up here but if i had the markings the markings negative 19 would be somewhere around in here OK, so I'm telling it anywhere above this negative 19 threshold, I want you to attack those signals and bring them down by five, a negative five dB. So any one of these that is above negative 19 is going to attack it with a, a 10, a 10 ratio. Basically, it's going to attack it and bring it down by about negative five dB. So let's listen to it now. On last time, we were just talking about. Uh, the need for uh, forgiveness and how we all, uh, we not only need Notice forgiveness, the red right here. but we also need to this forgive. Brought and down. I want to uh, go a little bit further on the definition of what that means. Notice how more uh, of it forgive. got brought down once we got into the, the taller audio signals here. So that's basically what I want to show you guys. This is how to get a more uniform audio signal. So now notice how my audio is a little too low is, still. Uh, is, a, is a Greek word. So what I do to bring that back up is then I adjust my output gain. And it came from the word charis, actually. And it means to uh, be bestow a favor unconditionally to show oneself uh, gracious, kind, benevolent, or to grant forgiveness, to pardon. Another aspect of that definition so here we go. So now what we did was we 
put the noise filter on. Then we put the compressor on. Definition means uh, to and forgive on the basis of one's gracious attitude towards an individual, willing or able to forgive, allowing room for error or weakness. Whoa, ouch. You know, and that's really what this is all about. So if you notice, that's with the compressor on. So now let's listen to it with the compressor off. Or able to forgive, allowing room for error or weakness. Whoa. So notice how much louder those audio spikes are than it is the lower ones. And so basically that's what the compressor does. It, it compresses it so that you give you a more uniform sound or audio signal being put out. It's a little bit more professional tweak that you want on your audio. So it sounds more uniform. So I hope this helps you guys because I'm going to be showing you guys all the tips that I can as I learn them, as I'm using them and I'm finding value in them because I'm your big brother. And guess what? I got you back. Okay, guys, I'm going to show you what they what is referred to as gain staging. Gain staging is the process of adjusting the gain so that you will get a more quality signal or recording or capturing of the audio that you intend to get. Basically, you want to start at the subject or at the sound, whatever device is the closest. In this case, it is the Rode Wireless Go 2 transmitter but there is no adjustment on the transmitter. So the next device in the daily chain is gonna be the receiver. So the receiver, right now, I have it set to negative 21 dB. And so what I wanna do is, I'm gonna show you guys something. I'm gonna turn down the gain on the camera. I'm substituting the Zoom H6 as the camera because I'm actually using my camera to film this. So I hope that this actually turns out to where you guys understand what I'm saying. I normally go around negative 12 to negative 9 dB. That's the sweet spot where I normally rest at when I'm setting the receiver and the gain on the Rode Wireless Go. And so if you notice, it's a nice spot where my loudest peak is actually in the yellow. It's not going to the red. So now, now that we have the receiver or the Rode Wireless Go 2 adjusted, let's go to the camera. So now that we have the receiver set, now if you notice where my volume is right here on the channel. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my gain on the channel and I'm going to turn it up until I get to my desired level here. So right here, as you can see, this light starts to blink when I'm talking really loud. And what's happening is it blinks when I, when I first enter the red zone. And so that's where you want. You want your loudest peak of the normal audio. You want the loudest peak to just break the red zone. And what that does is it fills up your threshold of your recording with more of your subject or the sound in which you're trying to capture, leaving less room for noise floor. And so that's the whole point of gain staging it's being able to set your gain so that you have a minimum noise floor and have a more professional sound or signal or audio being captured i hope this helps you guys all right vid hits that wraps it up for this video this is the Rode wireless go 2 and the Rode wireless go enhancement update video and so if you guys like this make sure you go ahead and give me a like and if you've been around this channel any other time you know this channel is all about iron sharpening iron and we all taking our skill to the next level you know me i'm aaron jones i'm your big brother and i got your back i'm about faith family and filmmaking if you're all right with that go ahead and hit subscribe because i got a lot more content coming at you